thank you for letting us bring you some inspiration from a small country up north, Sweden. In 2015, we decided to start Sepsis Fonden, the Swedish Sepsis Trust. And this is our story, but this is also the story about Sweden and the journey that our country has been on these past few years when it comes to sepsis and the care of sepsis patients. Adam, let's first talk about the healthcare process for sepsis, a project that you have very much been involved in. The Swedish government set up 20 different program committees and asked them to suggest diagnosis upon which to build up structured healthcare processes. The infectious diseases group proposed sepsis, which was selected among 10 other diagnoses. The choice of sepsis was much due to our efforts to raise awareness around sepsis to decision makers at all levels in the Swedish system for healthcare government. The project started in 2019 and will last for four years with a budget of 90 million euros. The multidisciplinary sepsis group built up an algorithm on how to detect sepsis. It would assign a score indicating when a physician specialist in infectious diseases should be involved. The group worked with and tested the algorithm and the process with hospitals in different regions of Sweden. The process also includes follow-up with patients after discharge. They identified markers for infection and set up an automatic SOFA score calculation. In May 2021, the final version of this structured healthcare process for sepsis in the emergency department was approved and will, during the autumn, be implemented at all 70 hospitals with emergency care in Sweden. The result is a better quality of care, which is measured with an increased survival rate. The downside of the approach is the cost for clinical and electronic follow-up, and also for the need to involve more specialists in infectious diseases in the emergency departments. But this is a big step forward when it comes to patient safety and care of sepsis patients in Sweden. Up until now, there has been no cohesive approach when it comes to detecting and treating sepsis in Sweden. From now on, when there is a suspicion of sepsis in the emergency room, this new structured healthcare process will start and it will follow the patient throughout the hospital treatment and ends after a follow-up dialogue with the patient. The overall goals are to achieve an equal and uniform sepsis care in all emergency hospitals in the country. The aim is to make sure that more sepsis patients get detected early and receive adequate examination, a correct diagnose, sepsis diagnosis and treatment and monitoring. And they should also be given adequate information and follow up after their hospital care. The next step is to develop an algorithm for a structured healthcare process for sepsis developed within the hospital ward as well. And this work will start in the fall of 2021. This is, from the patient safety perspective, a program that we are certain will save many lives and improve the quality of life for many sepsis survivors. In 2017, the World Health Organization committed to a sepsis resolution that declared sepsis to be a world health issue. Almost 50 million people suffer from sepsis every year in the world, and 11 million dies, making sepsis the most common cause of death. In the resolution, WHO declared 
that raising awareness around sepsis is the key in the fight against sepsis. In short, if you know what sepsis is and seek treatment in time, the chances are of a good outcome increases. When we started Sepsis Fonden, the awareness around sepsis was very low in the general public in Sweden. But there was also a lack of knowledge within the healthcare system. Before we started, we made a survey showing that as few as 21% of the Swedish population knew what sepsis was at that time. We have since then made a similar survey every other year and we have gone from 21% awareness in 2015 to 30% in 2017, 43% in 19 and in May this year, 2021, the awareness in Sweden had reached 49%. Almost every other Swede knows what sepsis is. This, of course, is still far too low, but it is a positive trend. And these numbers also show that the awareness work is something that we will have to continue with for a very long time and that it, make, it takes time to make a permanent shift in the general public's knowledge. One interesting finding that we made in the 2021 survey was the big difference between men and women when it comes to knowledge around sepsis. Women in Sweden uh, had increased their awareness from 51% in 2019 to 59% in 2021. And during the same time, men's awareness around sepsis was continuously on 35%. And this is something that we will have to work on in the years to come to make sure that men also understand what sepsis is. Last year, Sepsis Fonden launched a big national awareness campaign in Sweden, all around the country, stressing the importance for the public to both understand what sepsis is, knowing the symptoms, but also understanding the importance of seeking medical treatment quickly if you suspect that you have sepsis. Time is crucial when it comes to sepsis and awareness is the key in the fight against sepsis. Sepsis is the number one most preventable cause of death in hospitals worldwide. And we know that better awareness around sepsis in the general public will increase the number of cases that are treated in time and better knowledge within the healthcare system will furthermore increase patient safety and decrease the impact of sepsis as a major health issue. And of course, save many lives. We have put a lot of effort into different awareness projects, mainly aiming at the public, but also in order to get our decision makers to understand the vast impact of sepsis in society. All of Sweden's county councils and regions are insured under an organization called LOEF, which is the organization handling the Swedish patient insurance under the Swedish Patient Injury Act. Parallel to the implementation of the national structured healthcare process for sepsis, LOEF initiated another patient safety project in Sweden in 2019 with the goal to increase the patient safety and lower the rate of morbidity after sepsis in Swedish hospitals. LOEF has led similar patient safety projects for other common medical conditions with a high rate of complications, such as childbirth, abdominal surgery, trauma care, and suicide prevention. This safety project has been an interprofessional collaboration between LOEF and medical professionals from different disciplines, with a steering group with representatives from both doctors and nurses associated with infectious diseases, intensive care, emergency medicine, pre-hospital, microbiology, and so on. 
all 70 hospitals in Sweden are invited to receive an audit. So far, we have visited about 16 out of the 70 hospitals in Sweden with emergency departments. We are a bit delayed due to the COVID pandemic, but we are now proceeding with our audits. The idea is to work around a couple of clinical sepsis cases with different angles mirroring the whole chain of sepsis care from early detection in the emergency department or ward to the release from hospital and also mirror all parts of healthcare personnel and the infrastructure involved. These clinical cases are sent out to the hospitals in advance in order for us to receive responses beforehand. When we have the responses, we always start these reviews with a startup seminar where the group of examiners read up on the answers and plan the layout of the audit, what to ask about, what to focus on, and which key people they want to meet at the different hospitals. The group of examiners are doctors or nurses from different hospitals, often in these mentioned specialities, from all different levels. And we ask to be able to interview employees from all levels, from hospital management to assistant nurse in the ICU. We have a one to two day on-site visit to do the audit. And this audit results in a report with constructive feedback and suggestions for improvements that goes back to the hospital. And then we do a follow-up visit after six to nine months. This has proven to be a very efficient and in-depth way to work with patient safety in other medical conditions. And almost all Swedish hospitals have agreed on being audited before. Hopefully, this effort will improve sepsis care and increase patient safety in Swedish emergency hospitals. The goal is to continue this work in more hospitals and hopefully this will be finished in two to three years with participation from all Swedish hospitals. As I said before, our organization, Sepsis Fonden, has from the beginning in 2015 been working continuously with increasing awareness in the public. But we have not only been running big national campaigns, but we have also been producing target education. For instance, we made a film about the immune system and sepsis targeted to young people in high school age. Trying to increase the awareness around sepsis in young people we want to make sure that we build a stronger level of knowledge for future generations when it comes to sepsis in order to increase the impact and morbidity from sepsis. But parallel to this public awareness work, we have also been working closely to the healthcare system in Sweden, identifying areas where better knowledge around sepsis is crucial. For instance, the COVID pandemic made it evidently clear that we need to increase the level of knowledge around infectious diseases and sepsis within the care system for the elderly. And we have now launched a new project where we will create a target education about sepsis, aiming to increase the knowledge around sepsis within all parts of community care of the elderly. We know that older people have a higher risk of getting sepsis, but we also know that it can be harder to detect sepsis early on in elderly people. Some of the symptoms like confusion, for instance, can be mistaken as a common condition in an old person. Another target education that we are planning uh, is a multi-language project. In Sweden, almost one in 10 speaks and reads Swedish as their second language. Therefore, we are planning to create target education in multiple languages to make sure that we create a society where everyone understands what sepsis is, making all citizens aware 
of the importance of seeking medical treatment in time. Because, as we talked about earlier, sepsis is the number one most preventable cause of death in hospitals worldwide. We need to raise awareness on all levels in society. This is the key in the fight against sepsis. And it will ensure better patient safety when it comes to sepsis. So, thank you all for listening to us. Yes, and good luck with all your efforts around Europe to fight sepsis.